Jack O'Sullivan alongside me there. See some highlights there of Ternier against Ballon Hinch and Lansdowne against Young Munster. Two good wins and pretty attacking rugby all round. Yeah, look, I think that's what both these teams kind of base themselves on. I think with the, the day that's in it, you know, there'll probably be a couple of cagey affairs earlier on. So really the four packs are going to make the, make the four momentum and try and set themselves into this platform and allow the backs to try and do the thing and get some running rugby going. Well, before we get underway today, I spoke to the coaches a little earlier on. time Gloria stay at Lakeland surely these are the days you go into coaching for yeah definitely look it's look at the place it's you know a huge crowd expected for for half four obviously a little bit of a later kickoff um but I think it's great that the league is is, is, is broadcasting both the semi-finals the ones obviously currently ongoing but uh yeah look obviously you, you coach to try and be in these days we've we've been lucky enough the last couple of years to have had a couple of home semi-finals and finals in the Aviva and, and, and Bateman finals and so on so to add another one and, and hopefully come on the right side of it that that's you know that's why why, why we're in the game and 13 wins in all competition. What's pleased you most about your side? Yeah, I think it was just the resilience. You know, like when you win, um, when you win a championship, obviously it's you know there's the the worry is you know what will the hunger be like coming back? And we probably didn't start all that brilliantly uh, in, in the campaign. Um, you know, it took a little bit of time to get settled with new players coming in and players leaving and new coaches and things like that. But since we've kind of hit that run of form with 13 wins on the bounce, I think the resilience of the boys, uh, the kind of evolution in our game a little bit, and seeing new guys step up to replace fellas who've moved on. You know, we've been really lucky over the last couple of years with the quality of players that we've had but also the quality of players we've recruited and generated through the club and to see them coming to the fore you know that's a special thing for any coach and any club to to have uh, that kind of long-standing development of players within your club and we hope that they're able to to to, to capture the limelight today and, and and put in performances that would echo what what we've done previously and what about the opposition lansdowne you've played them twice already this year two humdingers close matches yeah. they're pretty good aren't they 
Yeah, really good three times because like, we lost in the Leinster Senior Cup final after after double overtime. So I think we've played around you know 240 minutes against each other, and there's probably about seven points in the difference. You know, so look, they they they're they're really well coached. Obviously, Declan Fassbender came in off the back of Mark McHugh, done excellent work with them, and uh, they've they've definitely kind of uh, probably driven a little bit in terms of where they were last season. I know they they, they were mixed at times last year, and I think they've got very good consistency. They've recruited really well, um, and they're a massive club. Like you know, they're the headquarter club. They've been so successful for such a long period of time. They have a, you know, a huge support base within the community there, and um, yeah, it's going to be tough. Like there's some really exceptionally uh, gifted players, and we're going to have to be at our best uh, if we want to come on the right side of it. And I think if you go by how the games have gone up until now, it's going to be you know probably a one-score game, um, and you're just hoping that both teams bring their A game because I think the occasion and the and, and and the and the weather today and the crowd and all that you know probably deserves two teams playing at their very best. And both sides like to play ball as well, and the weather lends itself to that. Yeah, big time. Look, you know, Lansdowne are really good and broken uh, field. You know, they've got really good strikes. They've got uh, a really talented backline. You know, and I think particularly their centre partnership of, of Rory Pratt and Andy Marks. You know, it's got a lot of praise recently and, and well vindicated. You know, and they, they've they've there's special guys didn't even make their match day 23 today. So probably evident of the, the squad depth that they have. So we're going to have to you know play very close attention there and, and make sure defensively we're we're in a good space. We, we've had a very good defence this year. Uh, it's probably been the backbone of our of our challenge. And obviously we've got some pretty special guys in the backs and and, and out wide as well but like every game will probably be a lot of it decided up front and, and, and what happens in the set-piece battle and I think that will be really intriguing uh, for the fans and, and, and everybody watching the game to, to have a look at. And finally, I know it's all about the semi-final but have you guys chatted about trying to go back-to-back? Yeah, well, look, you can't escape that. Like, you know, when you've won it and you're, you're trying to defend the championship, you're trying to plot a course to get you back to the Aviva. But uh, look, at every week in the AIL is extremely tough because the quality of the league and the quality of the players and coaches that you come up against. Uh, we haven't really talked about, like, you know, at the start of the year, we did, you know, explicitly say we would love to do it. I mean, I don't think anybody's done this in Shannon in 2006. They obviously had a very special team and I think they ran, won three or four in a row. So, you know, it, the reason why it's so difficult is every team's trying to chase you then. You know, we haven't been the hunted, you know, for a long time. Last year was our, our maiden victory. So, yeah, look, if we get through today, obviously that will be the focus, but but the, the, the task at hand here is so big, uh, we're not looking beyond Lansdowne. Sean, all the best this afternoon. Thank you very much. Thanks very much, guys. Cheers. Good luck. Charlie, after finishing seventh last year and getting into the playoffs this year, must be a pretty happy camp. Yeah, it's been great now. Like We've got up to the top four there. We were excited. We've got some good form coming into this game as well. It's the fourth time we've played here in Europe this season. Every match has been a ding-dong battle. I'm sure the match today will be no different than those. In the league, they've pipped you twice, but they've been great games. So how, I suppose, much revenge is there today to get one back on them? Well, look, it's there's a lot of um, respect between both groups, but a lot of healthy competition. We need to play deep into this match and make sure that at the end of the game there we're coming out on the right side. But it's been a one score in three matches there, and I think it's going to be similar enough today. Does the win earlier on the season away to Clontarf give you a bit of belief? 100%. Like Clontarf are an established top four side consistently for the last number of years. The fact we can go and away there at win shows we have the mentality to do it. We've got to really put into practice today. We've had good preparation over the last three weeks, so we feel we're in a good place going into this. And you guys like to play wide, wide, so to speak, with party up front, but this weather lends itself for that. Well, I think both sides are well-rounded teams. You're going to see width put on the ball. You're going to see fine attacking player. There's a huge amount of young attacking stars here today now on both sides that like to use the ball, and veteran players as well. But both sides, I think, have an attacking mind and principles towards their game and a philosophy. So it's going to be exciting, yeah. Does it add a wee bit of spice then being reigning champions? Of course, you have to respect what they've done in the last number of years. They've been, they reached the final of the AIL two years ago. They won it last year. They've got good form since Christmas. So the fact that they are winners, we want to knock them off. We want to be the number one side. And you've got to come away and beat quality sides like this to achieve that. And finally, if you are to win, what's the key thing you have to get right? Yeah, we've got we've got to have a good set piece. We've got to defend well. We've got to attack well. Look after the ball. But the key thing is you have to take your chances when they come. It's knockout rugby. You don't get numerous chances to win a game, but when you get them, you have to take your chances. Manage your nerves. Stay cool and stay calm. Charlie, all the best and thanks very much. Thank you very much, Stuart. Thank you. Charlie, after finishing seventh last year and getting into the playoffs this year, it's been a pretty happy camp. In the league, they've pipped well, you twice. Interesting stuff there from both coaches. Teams. Let's have a quick look at the two teams. So Sean Skane's side led by the quality Harrison Brewer, who is now in his 10th season at the club. He moves to the second row for this one. Also in the engine room is another tearing your college pupil in Michael Caffrey. In the front row, Levi Vaughan and Adam Chute are great club men and both started in the winning side in 2023. Irish club spare Alan Benny is at scrum half. 
for former Glenstall Abbey schoolboy Aaron Egan at 10. At 12 for the home side is Peter Sylvester. He has a bit of class about him. And also outside him is Sam Berman, the Irish under 20. Uh, what about the visitors? Declan Fassbender's team. And so team which is plenty of game, big game players. Under 20 Grand Slam winner George Morris is at loose head prop. He's in pretty good company with ex Gonzaga mate Tom Barry at hooker and Greg McGrath at tight head. Elsewhere in the pack, Clive Ross and Jack Hook need no introduction, having played with Ulster and London Irish. The lively Jack Matthews is at scrum half, with Stephen Madigan at standoff. He has 94 points to his name this season. Centre Rory Parada and Andy Marks have recently been in good form. We'll be looking to cause turn your problems. There you go, Jack. There's both teams who are pretty evenly matched. Yeah, look, plenty of good, a couple of good battles across those uh, those team sheets. I think, um, like I was saying earlier, early on in this game, now it's going to be really trying to set the tone up front. Um, be interesting to see how the two centre pairings go against each other, and be very interesting to see how Stephen Maddy, Madigan and uh, Aaron Egan go against each other at ten on the strings. Here he is now. Second season is captain up the club. Back row or second row, it doesn't matter. Harrison Brewer leads out his Chargers. We have a family affair here, but when we get down to the nuts and bolts, it's all about winning. It's a terrible year, so. Intimidating Jack, I'm saying you faced I've it plenty of times. been there a couple of times before. I'm surprised they weren't shouting and looking at the last coming out this time around. Um, but yeah, just what an audience. It's a massive crowd here today, and can't wait to see this one unfold. Referee today is Johnny Erskine, Banbridge Academy, politics and history teacher. Also coaches rugby in the school as well. So he's got the whistle. Lance Donald would expect a kick off here through Stephen Madigan. It's a big day for him. Yeah, listen, Mads has had a great season and you know he's had to step up a lot in a couple of the games that have gone by and I think he's really starting to come into his own. And you know himself and Aaron Egan are absolute ends of uh, the 10 channels, you know, both of those guys are going to have a big part to play in how this game unfolds today. Yeah, cup winner with Black Rock College. So we the last couple of admin issues. Pretty warm here as well. The weather has turned. And if we get half the game we got at Temple Hill, we're in for a treat. Yeah, I'm a bit nervous now watching the opening moments of this place it's uh, it's a lot easier being on the opposite side defence but it should be a cracker Karen Ure to receive and it's time to get the second semi-final up and running And next Sunday's final, the top table of club rugby up for grabs. Strap in, away we go. And the Dublin rivalry, a big take and a commanding presence. Benny getting the forwards on the front foot. Born in Scotland, Alan Benny, school at Dollar. Rory Lawson went there too, so a product of scrum halves. Tarnier trying to showcase their talent early on. Burr works the short side, keeps the ball alive. See plenty of that today. Benny wants more and on the front foot. And he's down. He need to hit that rock. Egan, nice and flat, and then the step. Just build and show a bit of composure. Good to see Mr. Erskine back up. Took one early on for the team, but did ever so well. All of Armstrong defence is yet to be broken. Then he goes for the conventional air ball. Brewer trying to sniff as he's done all season, but not this time. Here's Madigan. First touch. Rory Parada. Him and Marks. Formidable partnership. Madigan wants more. Just takes his eye off it. Tarnier looking to break and create something out of nothing. 
The reigning champions looking to start hot. Swiftly move through the hands. Campbell Classen involved. Benny goes against the grain. The whipper snapper of a strong half. We're locked and loaded. I should say. Cochrane. Caffrey. One of a number coming through the school system. That relationship so good into the club. The pirouette. Not Amelia waits, but won't be him. It'll be the man inside him. Amelia acting as the cleaner. Cochrane once more. Saying this week how he's loving his time at Turnier. Three seasons in. Egan. Will he get the wrap around? He certainly will. And there is space. Adam Legrou. Stalwart at 15. Manstone still on their metal. Tired bodies are ready. Cochrane's been everywhere. And the penalty comes. Not sure how many phases. Great stuff though. Yeah, listen, great start uh, by Terranier. They they really put themselves forward there, really good front run in rugby. And as we kind of expected, just putting their forwards through the paces. A um, bit of an unfortunate one there from Mads just to knock that on and just gave Terranier a little bit of extra possession and, yeah, paid the price. It's not bad when you're number eight. It's been capped by Leinster, Munster, Nottingham and Leicester. Real quality, isn't he? Yes, I do not miss tackling that man. What an enforcer. He, uh, he really knows how to get some, fun, some front football. Um, but listen, Lansdowne have plenty of uh, cavalry in their arms today. You know, Roy Clark will be hoping to have a big game here today. Barry Fitzpatrick, Harry as well. Um, so no, it's, uh, it's a very evenly poised team. Egan has 104 points in the league this year. Looking to extend that. Scoreboard ticking over. Let's just say it's through the post. Yes. He won't be caring. <laughs> I'd say he's had some cleaner strikes. I was watching him in the warm up there and uh, I think he was just trying to find his range a little bit. But uh, listen, that'll be great for the confidence just to settle the nerves early on and some easy points on the board. Plays across the back line, does a 23 year old, 10 15 and in the centres. Came from Trinity, actually coached under. Sean Skeen at Glenstall Abbey winning a cup in 2018, beating CBC. There's that school club relationship to the fore once more. A bit of miscommunication at the restart, but back in the hands of a turn urine. Looking to go wide. Pocklin drawing in. Lands down defence. First sight of Connor Phillips. Been in great form over the last couple of months, has Phillips. He's been a great introduction to the club coming in from Young Munster. You know, um, he's in very good pace on, on that wing, and uh, you know, he's had plenty of tries from this year so far. Brewer and Macklet with ball in hand. Benny thought about giving it, but realised they were running out of numbers on the short side, so he did the smart play. Brewer once more. The old school dummy not rolling away. Ronstein giving away an early penalty, but that is just pressure. Yeah, and you can see it early on. You know, Turnier aren't looking to give that ball away. They're looking to try and push the wider channels, put Lansdowne under a bit of pressure. And uh, yeah, listen, that's um, two sets of possession and two penalties in their favour. So uh, Lansdowne just need to sharpen up a little bit around the fringes. Turnier on a run of 13 unbeaten games. 12 in the league and then of course that Bateman Cup back to back champions another large kick from Egan but doesn't find touch there's a left footed clearance Hugo McLaughlin does ever so well in tight spaces yeah Hugo's another player has come through uh, just after recently playing with the Irish in the 20s um, I didn't have the luxury of playing with him last year but since he's come through you know he's only spoken very highly of um, great player and I'm sure he's a great uh, future ahead of him yeah and his brother as well playing with Irish under 18s recently number two pretty good family of rugby players as Ternier go to the front Benny 
Negan inside ball. Keeping this keep ball alive, so clear to see. Back on the switch line. Chopped at the ankles. Aaron Coughlin in close quarters, and there's a first turnover. Prada spins it away. There's his teammates at the breakdown doing the job. Matthews gets it away and met his match there. Did Stephen Madigan see what he was trying to do? Keeps the pill though, which is vital. Scrappy and Carnier have pilfered it. And it could be short lands down if Carnier looked to move it. Brewer Egan out in front. Good inside ball. Sam Berman. Lars under 20 himself. Turnover to turnover. I was just about to say. Hans Dimer close to winning it back, but Mr. Erskine said it was illegal. Yeah, I think um, of the two teams, Ternier have definitely started the better here. Lansdowne look a little bit nervous and probably just trying to jump at a couple of things that maybe aren't on. Um, but look, I suppose when you're playing away from home in the semi-final day, there's always going to be nerves. They just need to try and settle into this quickly before uh, any more damage is done. Lansdowne been more up on two occasions. First up in 97, then 2000, but also winning it three times. In the closer years, 2013-15, and most recently in 2018, it was against Cork Con. This man beside me was playing that day, and I really love another repeat of that final. Yes, one of my favourite days playing in Lansdowne Jersey was winning that AIL. It's uh, listen, it's not an easy thing to do, and both these clubs will know it's uh, it's a long season to get there. But you know they're in perfect opportunity here now on this day to try and get us some good pressure just there by Lansdowne and the liner. From the cold. I'm hoping as time goes on for your old team, a few less nerves, maybe. Yeah, listen, this this should be a, a good little platform now for us just to get through some phases, hopefully just get a nice clean exit and just try and get into the stride, you know. They're they're just kind of chasing the tails a little bit here. It just seems like they're kind of trying to settle into what they're trying to do. Um, you know, it's uh, it's to be expected though, you know, there's a lot of young players out there. So um, look, big moments here now in these scrums. And uh, just clean exits. Nine of this turn your starting team. Played in 2022 and 2023 finals. Probably not find a more experienced bunch. Recruitment they've done in the last five years, certainly. Been one of the best about. Nice, nice solid feed there by Lansdowne. Matthews That'll help a lot. Carrick and Shannon. Madigan, and there's the first sight of Eddie. Can't play fullback as well. Cahill Eddie. Ty Ross leaves it. Coming in the centre of the park here at Lakelands. Inside runners again, trying to punch holes. In this purple and white defence. Again, happy to keep with that. And why not if it gets gain line? And this time, it's Ternier not running away. And that's much better from the visitors. Much better, yeah. You can see Ternier really going after them there at the breakdowns and putting them under a lot of pressure. Um, Lansdowne just need to make sure that they're getting their pods set up and making sure that they're not going in isolated um, because Ternier seems to be hunting them around those uh, tighter fringes. Just pushing that up to the 22. First arrow for Tom Barry. And to Gonzaga. Does a bit of coaching as well at the school. Helped them win the Senior Cup in 2023. Irish 19s a couple of years ago, Barry. Trying to go to the tail. Doesn't hit his man, but. Madigan, like any good 10, wants that and goes down. Quick succession. Another penalty was up to be hands on the floor. 
I don't know about that now. That seems a little harsh to me. Lansdowne will think, count themselves very lucky there. Um, it's been one of their flaws throughout the season, trying to get a bit of consistency going with that line-out platform. And straight away, we see again, that really needs to be a sharp, sharp edge for them for the day today. You need your set piece in big games. Give us an insight into that line out, Jack. You know, there's so many different parts of the throw or the jumper, but how does it all work to say to the dummy guy? Yeah, well, look, I suppose Jack Cook came into the club this year from London Irish, and I think he's been running the show from the line out side of things. They have Mark Flanagan, who's ex Irisons in the backroom staff that's kind of running the, the plays. But really, you know, it is all about movement. It's just trying to get that feel, and I think, um, you know, it's as much as a small inch here and there is what's the difference in those throws. Seventh highest point scorer in the league. And Stephen Madigan. And just like Egan did a couple of minutes ago. Madigan repulsed with three points with his right peg. Back to a level playing field. I'd say Lansdowne would be delighted with this. You know, they've had to take all the pressure in the early stages of this game and to find themselves level pegging after 12 minutes. I know that's only positive starts. February, and the back pitch to Aviva, and then in November 24 23, the Iceman Dooley with a late penalty. He lives and breeds three points in his rugby now in America. Watching on, I would say. A great take from the restart. Egan sees space. Brewer goes to deck and gets back up into the standoff's hands once more. And then working the short side, kick comes through. Might well have been Craig Adams. There is space for Adams. City Phillips and then Cochlehan. It's well tackled by Rory Clark. Lansdowne looks surprised there at him turning over the ball. So lucky not to get the penalty their way, but you need to react to those moments. Lansdowne looking a little bit fatigued out there at the minute. Lancer schools had a great season, had a bit of a tricky time with injury. Played the, the final back in 2022 as well as last year's. And loses it from the line out. It's well read from Lansdowne. Not sure what they were trying to do there. Got their comms all wrong. A chance for an exit. Matthews asking his back three to chase. It's a great take. Connor Phillips, I make it. Nice hands from the loose forwards. Stepping inside, Campbell Classon. And he wasn't sure who to use, but looks to be Adam Melia. his teammate because that's Melia with the ball at the moment and Brewer acting with the link man into the hands of Adams Caffrey dummy runners everywhere and then the width there are the backs putting the hammer down Sylvester acting at nine. Cochrane gets it in the second fight. And they're back in shape. Egan 
The old school dummy. And here's the wide man, Nagaru. Has a player outside him, but he can't take it. Adam Nagaru with the line, but the drop ball, and they have to build from the back once more. Adams, you can see the disbelief. He had it in front of him. Scored a try in last year's final there. It might cost them later on, you don't know. But That's a big moment right there. Um, they'll be really feeling the, feeling the heat out there. I think I can see looking around there, there's water flying on from all directions. It's crucial in these types of games that you've got to take your moments. That's a big opportunity going to miss and Lanza and Phil count themselves very lucky. We've seen both Adams and Phillips very heavily involved in the first 17 minutes. Yeah, I didn't realise Connor Phillips was also good under a high ball. I knew he was quick with his feet, but uh, some cracking takes there. And they've obviously pinched that as a, as, a, as a target for them going into this game that they're going to try and use his aerial ability. Um, and it's paying dividends. semi-final, Corcon, Pipping from Torf. First team in the final next week. Of course, a full day of rugby next Sunday with the women's final before it. Still one team to get there. If they turn your lands down. Nothing separating the two at the moment. Just having a word with each other. Class and a former Master Academy member. Gets it right. Does Vaughan and the well oiled Terranur pack. Start to get some go forward ball. Vaughan says to Benny, use the outside men. Sylvester up the jumper. He is his building. Matthew Caffrey hits the deck. Adam Chute, it's not going to be him, it's going to be the man outside him. As he looks up to the referee, penalty again. Maybe another shot at goal, be interesting what they do here. Yeah, I think just looking at that phase of play there, you could have picked any three of those rooks to penalise Lanza, and it seems like the tackler keeps rolling into the rook. I'm not sure if this is something that they focused on trying to do before the game or not, but the referee is right on top of this. You need to watch out for that because I think that's five penalties now in the opening 18 minutes can't be giving away those man that many penalties at any level. <laughs> I think it's also interesting that uh, Terranier are trying to push for the corners. This, they've gone for the post here, but both previous opportunities they've tried to take the corner. Um, so they, they're obviously looking to try and take this Lanzan team on up front. Lanzan have managed to stand up to everything they've thrown this so far, but you know, they have to they keep putting themselves in these positions, inviting attack after attack. It's going to ask for a hard day. Better strike this time from Aaron Egan. Same result, two from two. Another three points kick. Three points between the two as well. Six three. Interesting hands down pick. Bonus points over the season, so they're always within games. Yeah, listen, they they have a never never say die attitude about them, and I think that's the beauty of being coached by Declan Fassbender. You're never done until you're done. You know, Fass has really instilled a good belief back in the team. Um, after I suppose what can be said, it was a tough year last year, um, but they seem to be rejuvenated, and you know, look where they are today. Yeah, Declan Fassbender, in the heart and soul of the under 20s. 20 years at Lansdowne and then taking over the role of Mark McHugh last Christmas. There's a bit of space for Lansdowne to play their cards. Greg McGrath carries hard. 
Madigan into the hands of the number two and Tom Barry. And then Rory Prada does a bit of ducking and diving and come back the open side. And there is some space. George Morris. Ball in hand, but last pass just letting him down, and that was a chance. Yeah, listen, that's probably the first passage of play we've seen in a Lands End today. And, you know, they're, they're very easily popping holes there left and centre. And, yeah, listen, just probably pushed that final pass. Another day might have come off for, for George, but um, look, they're in the right area here. One of the good young players coming through. Uh, Six Nations title to his name, George Morris. How impressed have you been with him? Yeah, George came on the scene last year. He's probably better known off the pitch for his uh, playing the spoons ability. But um, look, he's put on a good bit of weight in the last year in a, in a good way. Um, and he's, re he's really helped put, put a bit of strength to that uh, Land's End pack. You know, I think the scrum was an area that I'd say a lot of teams would have focused on after Mike Rullock left the club. Um, hasn't been as strong as it used to be. So between himself, Tom and Greg, you know, they've really helped batten down the hatches there. involved with Irish clubs recently Alan Benley in that win in Portugal Sean Skeen taking it as well as Adam Craig the Ballon Hinge coach charged down strong Andy Marks being a bit of a pest there yeah Marks has been one of the best players in the club for the last couple of years since he joined from UCD um, you know, once once he's he's managed to get himself a couple of games this year under the belts, keeping fit, and it's really stood to him. You know, he's probably been one of the standout players in the league himself. And Parada in the centre there, they're a formidable pair. Uh, studied at UCD, but playing his rugby, that lands down. Vaughan, even trying to go to the back. And pretty happy that's gone back. Madigan, oh, first phase, and Parada tries to steamroll over the top from Matthews. March, you were just speaking about him. Some good yards there. Yeah, no right to do that, Andy March. Front row forwards at their work. Parada slings the right ball. Here's Jack Cook. Captain London Irish for a spell. I actually lived with Jack for a summer over in London Irish, and uh, let me tell you, his playing abilities are a lot better than his cooking abilities. And so are his teams right now. McLaughlin in the path of Eddie. Great what a tackle. tackle! It needed to be made. Turner were stretched there. Yeah, listen, that's the first bit of really threatening rugby lands in the play today, and they're asking some serious questions. They're putting Ternier's line in under a lot of pressure there, as you can see. I think that's the third line that they've turned over. Um, but they'll be very happy with how they settled into this game now after a, a shaky start. Sam Berman getting across and getting the plaudits for his team. Had to make it. Ternier just need to focus down here now. Just get their basics right, get themselves out of jail. Nice, simple front ball, probably be the option. That's exactly right. Caffrey. And a double dunter. Winning the line out and then winning the penalty. Been around the team for three or four years. Caffrey coming up from the under 20s. One try this season. Doing the hard yards there. Yeah, listen, just as you can see there, that's just experience on the pitch, going back to their basics. I'd say that's probably Harrison calling the shots in there, calling the line out. Just got to win your ball, whether it's the front or at the back, it doesn't matter at this stage. Um, but again, Lansdowne just need to be careful of their discipline. Um, they had that turn here in the way they wanted them, and now they've given them an easy out. That's 
should be a couple of thousand here. That turn here, you can see with the heat, we're so not used to it. People no. need water quickly. We're nicely sheltered over here, though. Thank God. Um, but yeah, no, it's a, it's an absolute cracker of a day, so it is plenty of water been dished out onto the pitch again here. Um, but yeah, great start to this game. Yeah, I suppose we'd love it just to heat up a wee bit more on the pitch and a couple of tries either way. Yeah, it's kind of like they're almost shadow boxing at the minute. They're they're asking questions like Terenure have definitely gone at them from both angles. They're they're punching holes up front and asking questions around the fringes, but they're also very quick to switch it into attacking rugby out wide. But Lansdowne have been able to stand up to everything they've thrown so far and have asked a few questions themselves. Kick two for Caffrey. Wins it again into the midfield. Egan loving that wrap around. Oh, what a ball. Out the hands and this is Ternier at their best. Phillips dancing. High about that for Connor Phillips. Brilliant from Taren Europe. Their backs cutting loose. And the former monster man getting in on the end of it. What a try. Very, very easy play. And that's that's just the danger that Taren Europe have. You know, they have serious threats out wide. And what a finish. He's been a great signing for a Terrier this year, Connor Phillips. Really showing his class. Pretty sure it was Adam Legrue that made the break and then flicked it away. Adam Legrue's been one of the best players in this league for the last couple of seasons. You know, he's he's just good week on week. Um, product of the Irish 7 squad there the last couple of years, playing with them. A serious operator and across the back three between uh, Legru, Connor, and Craig. You know they're they're formidable outfit. So not his best, Aaron Egan. for a try and we got it Lands in just need to get back into their strides here good kick off needed get their line set and they really just have to watch the discipline these games can run away from you very quickly if you're not careful so they really need to get themselves back down the pitch and they just need to watch that, holding on to that ball Discipline being the main thing, though. So, with their tails up, are the hosts. <laughs> Benny Town Calfrey needs some protection as Lansdowne push through Clive Ross. Trying to pinch. Brewer asking the referee, has he got the ball? Matthews into Ross. Six years up north at Ulster. Nagaru goes for that smart option with the right peg. Kick kind of starts it. Bit of grass. Benny going across the pitch and oh, I should have run that. Sylvester. So we'll go downtown. He's gone all the way. Back for a scrum. 
You're right, Jack. Probably should have kept it in hand. The numbers on there. Lands in there starting to bunch up a little bit in their D. So they need to just get that communication in from the wide channels that they need to loosen out in the defence. So this turn your team will. They don't need to be invited twice. So a good midfield scrum here. Ten minutes to go before half time. See them lining up here behind the scrum. Hopefully first opportunity to launch a launch an attack here. Matthews swings it. Marks and then Madigan playing into the path of Eddie. Big shots coming in on Jack Cook. Ross gets go forward. Here come the charges. Matthews slings it the near side. All oh, very claustrophobic. McLaughlin does a bit of a hop, step and a jump Karen Ewer won a penalty and they will get it Campbell Classen turnover you would have been proud of yeah Karen Ewer are uh, really putting a lot of pressure in them and around those breakdowns I think Lansdowne just probably look a little bit um, I suppose lethargic and a little bit going into those breakdown areas. You know, they had plenty of numbers there and they weren't uh, weren't isolated, just tearing your much quicker to get on the scraps. just waiting to make sure everyone's fit and healthy so we restart with a penalty for Taryn Yearn. a bit of a breather for them moments in this game coming up to half time <laughs> slap back from Luke Closey Cochrane Yeah, not the cleanest. Egan has a bit of a dart himself. 
And here are the heavies. New center of gravity from Melia Egan. Had options in behind him, went for it. Benny. Dicing with death for that ball, but worked in his favor. Referee's hand up and not the greatest pass you play for Terran Uren. Lansdowne punched. Yes, great turn over there by Clive Ross. Um, yeah, that was probably a little bit uh, wayward play by Terran Uren. They didn't seem to have any, any idea what they were trying to do. Um, it's the first time we've seen them out of shape, I suppose, since this game started. But any any invitation won't be uh, won't be taken amiss by Lansdowne. Yeah, and they could easily maybe wilt it after that try, but they haven't. Yeah, listen, they've, they've stuck to their guns. They've done exactly what they needed to do. Pretty much all the rugby since then has been pretty much played up in the turn year half. So, yeah, look, they've bounced back nicely from that. Say Killian probably just spoke to the lads down under the post just about getting back into the stride, just stick with it. Um, you know, they're, they're by no means gone here. Played a lot of fullback at school, Stephen Madigan. Also, a lot of rugby in the 10 jersey in the saddle. Such a pivotal position. It's in a pivotal place right now. Plenty of height. And it's crept over. Fine striker of the ball. Yeah. His pack will be happy. Yeah, listen, you always appreciate the three pointers as they come. Um, so that was a great take by Mads. Just about had the legs. Um, yeah, listen, it's back to being a one score game again. Jack Cook, pretty clear to see if it was. Like a salmon up there and came down nicely. Matthews, Prada, mixing it up nicely between 10 and 12. McLaughlin, probably forcing it too much. And Benny, the volleyball pass. And straight to deck. No one wants to keep it. It was his bit, Coughlin. Trying to get his team going forward. Brewer again. And they're let loose once more. Brewer, how about the skills? Kernier putting on a bit of a spread here. And then Coughlin cutting lands down in two. One more is needed, one more is got. Clossy. Inches now, the stepping from Sylvester. Benny digging. It's Puck decided it's their turn. We're over again. Big number eight. That's why he's here and he's here to score. Yeah, incredibly difficult to stop those kinds of players from that, that sort of range. Um, you know, Lansdowne be kicking themselves. There was no reason for them to give away that sort of possession or, I suppose, territory that easily. Um, but yeah, look, it looks like it's just been two laps in concentration and Terran have punished them both times. Um, that can be the difference. When they get into that sort of possession, they're very clinical. Yeah, and then, listen, once these guys get their tails up, they're incredibly difficult to keep on top of. You know, they're going to have the crowd excited now. They're going to start to get their tails up and believe that they can try and push on for more now. So Lansdowne really need to reply, try and get a response before halftime. You saw the line bake from Brewer, but also because that's why he's played so much rugby at such a high level, just to not take the contact and use the backs. Yeah, I always remember playing against Harrison coming through school and he was always the same, you know. 
really versatile player for such a big guy you know he's well able to play a bit of ball I remember watching him back at Junior Cup and I think he played at 12 so he's still got those uh, football abilities football skills still in the locker yeah I did play as you say Irish under 20s for a couple of years actually in the backs and then a couple of years later decided to go back in the forwards where he started in a junior cup at school so versatile as well Benny taking on a lot of responsibility with the right boot McLaughlin doesn't need a second invitation to try a hitch kick and go forward Madigan, Parada, vicious flick of the wrist, chop tackle from Legru. Matthews looks up and saw a few bodies he didn't want to see. Parada on the outside and the dummy, Rory Clark, galloping through. Matthews again, ball retentions. Pretty good statement from Lansdowne in this play. Van Eden acts as a decoy and flicks it away. And lovely. Andy Marks uses his space. Here's the back row forward. Barry Fitzpatrick. He can't get it down. Another massive shot from Adam Legru. Yeah, those are the moments to win you games. What a tackle. Thought Lansdowne were in there. Barry didn't know if he was. Uh, if he was walking that in or, or sprinting it in, but um, listen, the groove got across there very well, got the tackle in. I thought Maxi could have just squared up a little bit just to try and get his attention. Um, and that's what they try and coach you back in the training field. It's always trying straight straight lines, and catch and pass. And listen, that's a great response from Lanzane. Um, that's what they would have wanted before coming into halftime. Fortunate there not to get the score. That's two, two opportunities gonna miss. These are big moments here now. Best chance of the match for Lansdowne as well. Absolutely, absolutely. They've uh, they haven't they haven't fired too many shots. Anytime they've managed to hold on to the ball, they've looked very threatening. But um, it's been few and far between. It's been pretty much all turn here this half. Hard to tell with the clock, but I think we have a couple of minutes or at least one anyway. It will all be dictated. The man in the middle in the green shirt, Johnny Erskine. So camped on their own line. They do have the scrum turn your going for a second title. In this all Ireland league, they have had their hurt as well. 2022. That's a formidable side in Clintorf. And last year, come into their own in that final. It was a great day for them, but also the crowd. Hoping for that next week and next Sunday with a big crowd as well, Davida. Yeah, and listen, with the double header, it's it's great for the AL. I think the the league itself, it's it's just going from strength to strength at the minute, and you can see by the the cameras there. It's not a huge crowd at this game today. I believe there's a massive crowd down in Temple Hill. So it's, um, listen, everything is good in Club Rugby at the minute. What a way to showcase these players. Benny does his part. Peter Sylvester crawls a few extra metres. Looks to be a substitution there. Mikey O'Reilly for Terenure. Egan wallops it into touch. And that will be that at half time. Two tries for the reigning champions. It was a bit edgy at the start, Jack, but they've taken the control and put the foot down. Yeah, just a couple of laps in concentration there from Lansdowne. A couple of unforced errors, penalties here and there. It's kind of what's the difference between these two teams. I think I'm, if you've actually been watching this game, you know it looks like it's a very balanced 
balanced match. A lot of good players on the pitch and very evenly poised, but just Taranier taking their opportunities. So at half time here at Lakelands, Taranier in control, 18 points to six. We'll be back shortly for the second half.
welcome back to Lakelands. Lansdowne have it all to do, 18 points to six. They will get us underway, and I suppose, Jack, we must confess, my fault, or the team sheet's fault, the two wingers have swapped, and it was actually <laughs> Connor Phillips, not Craig Adams, in that first score. We're only the guys sitting here calling the game. It's not our fault. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, Craig Adams, not a good player. He'll forgive us after the game, I'm sure. Brewer. Looking to strike early in this second 40. Sam Berman. He called up two under 20s. Last year scoring against South Africa. Change in the front row for Tarnier. Conan O'Donnell. Benny. Inside ball. Brilliant rugby. The captain under the sticks. The door firmly shot on Lansdowne. And Harrison Brewer. It's all the plaudits. I know it's only first minute back into the second half, but I have a feeling that's a bit of a killer blow. Lansdowne would have been looking to come out fighting and start that second half. And Terenier just first to everything at the minute. They really are just all over Lansdowne at the moment. And, and they're really facing an upward battle here now to try and get back into this game. And there was our winger, Craig Adams. He was the link man. Definitely not Connor Phillips. No, I can confirm we had to go and ask him at half time, Jack. Egan pumps it through the post. And Lansdowne creeping into a mountain decline. Yeah, look, this is where the leaders of the team have really got to step up now and drive the guys around them. Um, you know, they have it all to do for themselves, but as we've seen before, this, this team has never finished until they finished, so it's not over just yet, but they're going to need to respond quick. And the Shannon won back-to-back -back titles, gone a few times, four in a row, 95 to 98. And then 2004 to 2006, won three titles. Still a good bit to go, but Turner looking for that second title. Have some defending to do. Parada seems to weave and look around the outside. Off his knees. Oh, Matthews and Madigan just has to take it into contact. Pull back from Van Eden. Injured player on the turf. Matthews. That's the generate quick ball. Not again. Parada has an option. Hugo McLaughlin. Steaming forward was McLaughlin. McGrath. Good hands for a big man and March. Does the same and Ross with a tip pass. And off his win is the captain, playing Redmond. Started with a Tullo rugby club, and through Lansdowne under 20s. Coast to coast, and then the punch. Big tackles coming. Morris wants it, but off his ops otherwise. Arguably their best bit of passage of play, Lansdowne. Yeah, it's probably the first time that they've. Had an easy string of play, asking a couple of questions there. I thought they were on when Clive just tipped on that pass back to Jack, but they uh, just seemed to run out of numbers out wide. But look, it's the response they need. I suppose if it was me calling here, I'd probably be going for the corner. I've got to chase this game now. Sort of nothing to lose now. You'd probably say go to the corner and look for the catch and drive. Absolutely. We haven't got a chance yet. Lansdowne and haven't had a chance, should I say, to, to test this tear near a pack up front. Um, so if it was me, I'd be looking to go for it. And there we go, going for the scrum. Even if it doesn't happen today, sort of the rocky period last year, 
might be a couple of years when Lance might maybe get to a final. Who knows? Could be the next 30 minutes. But they seem to be building again. Yeah, look, obviously we're still in the middle of the game here, but there's some good things happening in the club at the minute with the, with the new venture with uh, Claremont and the Um You know, some good players after coming in. Harry from Navin. Uh, you've Roy Parada in there as well that's after joining in. You know, some very experienced guys, new players, but bringing a wealth of talent. So, you know, there's, there's lots of things still to come from this team. Who's to say they're out of it? Killian Redmond and his troops certainly won't. Van Eden, former Navin powerhouse. Advantage comes out. It's Ternier's defensive light sound at the moment. When will it change? If it will, pick and jump. One latcher on to the next. And Ross. The dummy. And they get something at Lakelands. Madigan. Parada. McLaughlin. Last stretch, but what an offensive set for Terenure. No, has he given a penalty? I'd say it might be a yellow card, but we'll. We don't have the ref, Mike, but let's just hold on a second. Peter Sylvester going to spend 10 minutes in the bin. So here's a question. Am I being stupid? Why isn't that a penalty try? Or was there enough cover? I think he probably didn't get the penalty try because he had made the tackle but then just killed the game off. Sealed off the ball when he was off his feet. So yes, absolutely yellow card every day of the week. Oh, the link play integrates from the five metre top. Matthews scoots one way and drops it off the other. Close to the post. Tony Erskine having a good look. And a second one at that. Still can't see a grinding. I thought he got that. I thought he got that. Is that the bias in you? Is it or is that truth? I think that ball was on the ground. A dejected Clive Ross. Maybe a few players agree with you there, Jack. I think with those pick and drives all year, coach and staff would probably have been trying to coach the lads into getting out past the first man, trying to get those extra yards, but turn your really solid in the, their, uh, their D sets. You know, they've uh, a wealth of good coaches in there. Sean Skeen leading the charge with the guys. And, you know, Lance and find it very hard to get over here. That's why they're champions. Sets like that, you know, you're, you're looking down on the paper, you're gutted here because that was another massive opportunity. Yeah, and listen, that, that's the sign of a champion team, you know. It's those moments in games where you really have to get in the trenches and really dig for each other. And you can see there just communication going around, tearing your lads. You know, they've got a really good collective group of guys that are working together, working for each other. And that's, you know, that's, that's what every team wants. Went to Ross Craig. Did Jack Matthews. Four tries this season. Pretty good a run of games at nine. Van Eden weaning the scrum and countless penalties. I suspect will be another scrum in the introduction. Tammy Lacia. What a man to bring on. Yeah, Temi, one of our Leinster lads, uh, serious operator, he's been pushing hard. Um, you know, I think he's just on the back of a, a small injury there the last couple of weeks, so they'll be delighted to have him in. You know, they also have Teddy Boland sitting in the flanks there, ready to go. And I think if anyone knows or has played against Teddy, he's a, a scrum guru. I think he's about 80 kilos, but will put any prop to shame. Through the system in the Enniscorthy, Temi Lassie and 
couple of cups for Leinster, maybe against Ulster. March 2022. But right now he's in the middle of a semi-final clash in the AAL. And his team need him here. it at the base, Matthews getting scragged wide ball and he is in, Cathaletti gives them something and they're starting to build and maybe they're not out of this yet yeah look it's uh, definitely giving them a lifeline in this game um, Cathaletti has been one of the best players for that club all season and was uh, rewarded with his Irish club's call up I suppose the only thing I suppose Ternier can probably take from that is that if you're going to let a team score, you let them score wide. Make it difficult for the kicker. Try not let them eat into that lead. Went to Prez break. This is fifth try. The season in the AL. Cathaletti. So just a full compliment now with a two score game Monaghan looking to chip that even further down he's pressed that ball but it stays in the air and just drifts wide and all of a sudden his shoulders are up there and lands down a wee bit of momentum. Yeah, it don't, doesn't seem like anyone's panicking out there. You can see Rory Parada's just shouting the orders to the guys. Just need to get themselves a good, clean restart here. Get the ball, get their exits. Just build their man up here so they've, they have an opportunity. Yeah, and it's funny you say that, you know, back in January, February, away to Clintarf, they were definitely 10 points or whatever it was down, and they came back and won the game. Yeah, and even if you go back to two years ago and we played these guys in the semi final, I was playing, I think we were 15 points down at one stage and got ourselves back for the kick to win it. So, you know, it's, it's kind of one of those things you're just you're never finished until you're finished, and these guys are going to keep pushing to the very end. Now the passes are sticking. All started from a great take from Ross. McLaughlin certainly doesn't shirk away from the contact. Both second rows have worked hard. Cook and Clark trying to probe corners. Stephen Madigan. Legree. Always running it back. And Ross had to get it all in one movement. Many young back rows are looking how to steal over. Just watch that. Marks. Low centre of gravity. McLaughlin. Eddie. Needs to get out of a phone box there, and he certainly shoes everything. And what about the left foot from Barry Fitzpatrick? He even got the luck of the points there, and Lansdowne should have the line out. A bit of footballing skills from first Patrick. Yeah, some nice little play there from Cotteletti with the feet as well, just to open up the space for Barry. And I'm not sure if he'd be better known for his piano skills or his footballing skills, but listen, he's a quality operator on the pitch. Well, there's plenty of notes hit there, Jack. There you go. Also, <laughs> come off the bench in the final back in 2018 to Barry Fitzpatrick, so he's been there a long time. Yeah, he, um, Barry, Barry's been with Lansdowne pretty much since he left school. Um, I think he took a couple of years out there, and this is his first year back. And from, from speaking to the guy, he's been really enjoying his rugby since he got back, and you can see it out there. Really leading from the charge. Not Amelia, the workhorse. He's all right, which is good to see. Brother Michael as well, was a big part of tearing your club. 
played in the finals 2022 and 23. Actually in Australia now. Those lads won the Curry Cup. He was captain Rosemilia back in the day. Change at nine. Forster. Four lands down. Now Parada takes matters into his own hands. Brewer looking at the ref. The ref saying you're giving away a penalty. Forster trying to leave something and marks how he got away there. And punching holes. Had to go from a standing start. There you see. Madigan strutting. The volleyball and we'll come back to, from the original infringement, not back ten off the quick snipe. Yeah, that's it. Lansdowne have got to play with tempo now. I think uh, looking at the team sheets there earlier on, when they go with Jack Matthews at nine, they're usually looking to try and play with a bit of pace. But uh, James Kenny equally able to, to bring that pace into the attack, and that's a great intro from him. So he's already injecting a bit of life into that attack. and shirts doing me over again Jack James Kenny is at nine not Liam Forrester I Stand probably corrected don't think I would have been forgiven for that one there pivotal moments the juggernaut of the Lansdowne pack going forward but through the middle Kenny Shots flying everywhere. The dummy. And he's only on and he's under the sticks. That's a second in quick succession. James Kenny. And we have a game in our hands. That is absolutely game on. What a play by Lanzen. Since that yellow card, it's been all Lanzen. And listen, this is this is kind of deja vu stuff here right now. Two years ago, built themselves back into the game. Turner really need to just set themselves down here. Seemed to be a little bit lost for big players at the minute no one's stepping up to make the big plays as they were in the first half and Lanzan are capitalising on all those opportunities they're getting you can see the pass is starting to stick the lads are starting to build a momentum just looking at the team here having their chats you can feel confidence off them and all seven points come I'm not joking Jack ever since I said maybe it wasn't going to be this year they've just started to score tries say it again <laughs> There's a bit of a silence here in Lakelands. A wee bit startled, the champions. But you would have thought they'll have their period in this half where they're strike again, but at the moment it's turning into a bit of a humdinger, particularly over the last quarter. Son and easily taken like a good GA player. So his last act was scoring tries, Kenny and Knight. Puts one into the afternoon sky. Look out, he doesn't drop many. Kayesi. Not sure how he got it. And it was just booted through the rock. But Tanay Leasi would have been caught by Declan Fassbender. Go and do something, and he has. Yeah, I think that ball just bobbled out of the rock there, and Tanay was first on it. I think they just need to really focus on just getting the simple things done well. Hold on to the ball. It seems like every time they're holding on to the ball, they're really asking questions to turn here. So you know, I don't think it's panic stations just yet where they need to be throwing those wayward passes. Both line outs have started to sick, stick. Oh, a couple of early exchanges in the first half where they a couple of cricket throws. Oh. 
Connor Phillips tries to turn this game on his head and catches like that and start to do things. Could have numbers on the wider channels, but most of them are pretty sound there. Yeah, that's a good G set for the guys. Um, putting Tony on the pressure and forcing the mistake. They'll be happy with that. Just looking around here now at some of the body language and some of the players and hands and knees. I'd say we'll probably start to see a couple of changes coming in for Tony before too long. Barry again gets the call. Clark. Again. Keep going at this back three, but Legree keeps answering. Benny. Replacement Conan O'Donnell. Captain Conan also played a bit of rugby in New Zealand. Got the 27 year old from Sligo. Even super rugby with the Highlanders, so what a man to bring on. Years later, team have won a penalty and they're getting a bit aggressive out there and a bit orgy bargy. All in good humour, of course. Absolutely, this is what you love. The quietest man in the pitch, Greg McGrath. First man stuck in. Greg's obviously up for this one. Nothing too sinister, though. After a few bits of chat, he can look to get his team back into the Lansdowne half. It's pretty safe and steady. Even better than the Ilex and the crowd are starting to up the decibels. They want to see something quickly. Both coaches said before the game it probably would be within seven points. And after an hour, it's turning out to be like that. Vaughan, Ross, again, Barry Fitzpatrick trying to turn into the number 10 role. Adams just about tackled. Cochlehan. Wolves playing with ball in hand. Benny and Egan. And then the hammer is down from Berman. Brewer. One hand is turning into sevens. Harrison Brewer. The expertise. Again, quick in the whistle with not rolling away. Benny is told by his winger just to kick a chill. And one of the standout boys, Harrison Burr, hasn't he? Yeah, he's really having a big influence on this game here. Getting the hands free, causing Lands and all sorts of problems, showing up all over the place. And it's definitely been one of the standout players so far here today. Leading from the front. So like they were in the first half. Trying to get that back with the control. James Kenny. Cochrane goes looking 
for the try line. O'Donnell. As they move in field, and then Benny tries to jump over the rock. He is after Fears. Referee happy it's gone back. Hands down, pull to get their mitts away. 20 minutes to go. Will they wilt again, Lansdowne, after such a good repost. Penny back to the day job. Try, try, and try again. Two or three of them getting low. Messi doesn't get it this time. And then there was a mishap and a knock on, and Lansdowne. Need to flood the open side, but we'll win it back. McLaughlin. There'll be a scrum called. Massive to stay in this game. That's a big moment right there. They've got the discipline sorted out by the looks. It was a really good deset. They scrap for every inch there. Doesn't look like look like much on the screen, but. They were winning the small inches there, and that's what you really got to do. They're not going away here. And here the Terranier faithful starting to get in behind their team here now. Just playing in the right areas, just trying to keep Lansdowne pegged down here. And it's all about a good clean exit. He start it's just erupted the last half an hour hasn't it yeah this game is always going to kick into life as the you know couple of bodies 50 60 minutes under the belts you know you're always going to start to get a couple of open holes those backs have plenty of running rugby left in them still so they're still looking pretty fresh out there so the game is always going to come into life and you know we've got a brilliant game here great spectacle for club rugby Fourth season at the club, Kenny. Benny. Make sure he knows where he's at. Is. The penalty is conceded from Tarnier. Small wins. That's nearly as good as a try. Yeah, that's a, that's a massive moment there. Tarnier get over. It's, it's almost game over for Lansdowne. They've given themselves a chance. Love going out the back, do the visitors. Not bad through the middle either. Kenny, the pick and scoop. Tammy Leasi. Marks. Good hands from the outside centre. Just as I pick the backs up with the hands. The forwards let them down. They go up to the halfway line, you know, a couple of minutes ago, they're under their own pump, under their own six. Yeah, look, it's just a small mistake there, just slight lapse in concentration, but I don't think they'd be too disappointed with where they've got themselves out to. Um, you know, that's a really good deset set there by Lansdowne, getting themselves out of, their, out of their danger zone. Just got themselves back into the right area of the park. 
Work's not done though. No, you're right, but Declan Fosspander has rung the changes there, which you called for a wee bit earlier on. Yeah. I suppose it's probably becoming the, the norm now in rugby these days where coaches like to flood the bench about 20 minutes to go, half an hour to go. It's almost like a direct impact. Just looking through the two team sheets here, there's, there's plenty of talent launched from both sides of the both sides of the pitch. And you know, tear near the likes of Conor McKeown, Colin O'Donnell, Paul on. Lanza and obviously bringing the likes of Temi, James all making immediate impacts. Benny, of course, actually won obviously an AL with Ternier, but did it with Lanstein as well. But he's given his old team a bit of a lifeline here. There's the move from the trading paddock, didn't quite click. Nice attacking platform here now for Lansdowne. Center of the pitch. Seems to be gaps starting to open up for Ter from Terniers defense on this side of things as well. See if they can put up a couple of yards together. Adam Chute had a well earned rest, and now he's back. Into the heat of the battle. Cohen O'Donnell leaves the paddock. Madigan patting the chest. He wants it. What a scrum from Lansdowne. And this new front row, or a couple of members of it, are certainly earning their stripes. Yeah, this is, you know, I suppose it's probably something that Lansdowne really needed to put a couple bit of focus on for the last couple of years. Just struggled a little bit in the set piece, but today, for those couple of early errors, you know, they've been really good. Line outs are running really well. Scrum is really solid. And there's your reward. You've a line out now, about 10 meters out from the town here line. Pivotal kick. Oh, Stephen Morrigan. A pivotal throw coming up with Barry. A couple of men at the front, and that's where they go. And then they peel straight away to catch turn your napping. And the speed of play picks up as well. Morrigan, they go from coast to coast. Tackle from Phillips though. Adam Bolin. I think I see him out there. Madigan. Marks. Again. Barry. Oh, you see a number two there, but he did his job and Leasi tries to free the arms. And the power comes on the full back. It's all happening. Another score from Lansdowne Rugby Club. And after writing them off time and time again, I've turned the script upside down. Yeah, that's just good control play there by Lanzan. You know, just James Kenny's really had a solid impact since he got on the park. He's really dictating the flow of the game. He knows when to speed it up, slow it down. He's, he's been in that squad now for a number of years. And look, what an introduction he's had to this game. He's, he's been really influential since he got on the park. Nephew of Nile Woods is James Kenny. He'll be watching on proudly. Former Irish international, as well as playing for London Irish Leinster. And a few other clubs, likes of Harlequins. And by passing on a few tips to the scrum half. Doesn't need too many, as far as I can see, though. That's the responsibility of the man outside him. And Stephen Madigan. Oh, 
come with a man. Stephen Madigan, his best kick of the afternoon. And what a time to deliver it. 25 all. In the round, 10 minutes to go. We'll keep you updated. Aaron, you're obviously back up to 15 players. You can hardly watch. I'm definitely struggling here to watch this. Uh, the nerves are very much a real thing standing on the side of the, of the, side of the stadium. Um, you know, Taryn, you're just, I think they've just gone a little bit quiet the last 15, 20 minutes, so their turn there just to get a little bit of solid, solidarity in the defense. Redmond. Taking the restart. Madigan looking to get some shape into this. McGrew for once lets it bounce but doesn't lose his concentration. Connor Phillips through the first man but didn't bring the ball with him. Thought about slinging it. And then Redmond. Turner reported like the Red Sea and Redmond said, I'll have that. Then the last pass. Small margins there. Just looking over the turn here, bench trying to see if anyone else has to come on. Does seem to be a bit of cramp starting to get into the legs here now across the pitch. A couple of tired bodies definitely starting to show now. I was looking last night and it is even at full time. We will go to extra time. Ten minutes each way. As much as we'd love a replay. I can imagine the big boys out there would be only delighted if this game finishes in a draw to find out they'll be having an extra 20 minutes of rugby. I'm sure with uh, Cork on uh, watching on, I'd say they'd only be delighted to see this game going to extra time. Had a little walk at the pitch there earlier on and to be fair to the guys out there, still a little bit soft on the foot. Pitch is in great condition, but so it's definitely catching up on the legs a little bit now. Cork Con, no doubt, watching on. A happy bunch. First team in that final. There's two others out here. Looking to play their part. Nothing separating them. Top table in club rugby. That's the prize. Benny. Egan and then ten still comes from Terrier from a very healthy crowd. Cries of exit from the crowd. Shoot. Did a bit of juggling. Not running away, Benny. Oh, there's life in them. There certainly is, Sylvester. No one wants to bring him down. Shoot again. Needs a bit of help. I think he had the ball first before he went off his feet. I'm not sure how they don't have that. Crazy was in there but the penalty is conceded Ian very quick hands on the floor from the prop so close and tight net margins yeah it is starting to come down to those fine moments here now um, Paul Lanzan had got that turn over there and Turner managed to snatch it back sign of a good team they're really digging deep out there yeah, it was interesting there. It was almost as if the Lansdowne defender was saying, ref, can I pinch this? And maybe that second just caught him. It's almost like you just don't know sometimes. Some referees just call it how they see it. Um, 
it's probably one of the grey areas of the game where it's very hard to get consistency all the time around that sort of uh, sort of a call. But look, so far I think the refs having a brilliant game. He's letting it flow, and uh, no complaints about that. He certainly is. He's been very consistent throughout the afternoon at Lakeland's Johnny Erskine. One last breath from Aaron Egan. Never anywhere else from the standoff. And he nudges the host back ahead. He's been prolific off the tee. Twenty-eight, twenty-five. What of lands down, got in the legs. How deep can they deep? How deep can they dig? I should say. They've turned over the restart a couple of times. Forrester. Madigan, the centres, a tricky trio to tackle. Greg McGrath. Some engine for a prop. Madigan looks for space. Egan. Exactly where he can play. Covering the ground. He's done full back for a long time there. And that's where he came into his own. Yeah, I've noticed the, the back three of Terran here today have been excellent in terms of how they're covering that backfield. Anytime lands in, look to like, look like they have a bit of an overlap. They're well covered off. Got a nice pendulum running across the back of the pitch there, and I suppose at the end of the day that probably just comes down to good coaching, and then you know, the players just implementing it on the pitch. See Jack Cook there at the cap, or the key player, I should say. Nice cap on the side before. A few heavy breaths in the body as he rejoins the scrum. Shove in the second half, not the scrum. Turner get party this time. The switch play. They leave the ball behind and it's hacked upfield. It's chased by Phillips. The footballing skills. Who's going to bounce on it? It's not going to be a score. Great battle between Redmond and Phillips. Two flying wingers in full flight. And did it actually go dead all the way back, or is it just going to be a 22? Seems to be shaped up for a 22 restart, doesn't it? I'm not sure you knew what to call there, but I thought Killian knocked it back over the, the dead ball line, so I would have thought that was a scrum play for turn here. But um, we won't complain. Well said, as a neutral Jack A. Did that cross the 22? Somehow it has, and we're going to take advantage of this look. Charging down. Right touchline. Can this game get any more entertaining? Kenny. McLaughlin has already scored a try. The feet. On the loose forward, Casey secures the ball. Another penalty. Now we see another card. Adam Chute, the guilty party. And yes, the yellow card is Brandis. Chute. Unless it goes to extra time. This game will be over. I imagine the three points will be kicked. Yeah, but that all came from utter confusion 
down at that restart. I'm not sure what quite happened there, but I think what happened was Ternier played the ball, didn't didn't collect us, didn't gather, and uh, Lanzan were free to play away. I think everyone was waiting for the whistle to go there. It just never came. This is why this league is so good. Just creates incredible matches. Big game players as well. <laughs> this nip and tuck affair keeps delivering. 28 all. Couple of minutes to go. Madigan and Egan having a bit of a duel off the tee so far this afternoon. Answering each other time and time again. Surely this is why you play the game of rugby, Jack. Absolutely. I'd say the guys out there are loving this. It's uh, it's getting into the nip and tuck now, though. No one will want to make a mistake coming into the closing stage of this game. Good restart. What a take. Connor Phillips. Brewer with the sunny belly ass ball. Even in the moments. Luke Thompson trying to have a nibble. Coughlin. Maybe it's time like this where he'll shine. Amelia. Cries of chop tackle. And two of them went at it. Brewer, the dummy. Casey needs to stay and not go in at the side and just about is obedient to that. Keep trying to pilfer. Got to keep their discipline. It's tearing your go for the zigzag approach. Benny has the big men where he needs them. Egan says give me the ball and he's off on his jaunt Jordan Coughlin it's closer to his scrum off so many offside calls I think they're okay at the moment Lansdowne no one can watch this one oh what a way to give a penalty Pretty stupid there, Jack, from Temi last night. I don't know what Temi was thinking there. Just shoved the nine into the back of the back of the rook. That's heartbreaking for Lansdowne. But he still has to kick it. Yeah, it's listen, it's not an easy kick. But uh, the way Aaron's been kicking there the last uh, last couple of strikes, you know, I think he'll fancy his chances with this. Should be enough time for Lansdowne to try and have one more, one more attack at this afterwards. But yeah, I'm not sure how they've managed to do that. They look really comfortable indeed there. You can. The man in control here. The flags go up. The last play of the game. Turn you have done it. The dream still lives on. Aaron Egan, the match winner. Lansdowne crestfallen. But the reigning champions are looking to do it again next Sunday. 31-28. What a blast it's been in the AL semi-final. We've had two brilliant games, but it's going to be Terenure against Cork Constitution next Sunday afternoon. And the man beside me, Jack O'Sullivan, is gutted 
this team gave everything. They gave everything today. Yeah, look, Lansdowne can be extremely proud of themselves there. You know, I think 20 odd points down at one point in the game. You know, they look dead and buried, but sign of a team to come. They really dug deep there to get themselves back with a chance. And yeah, it's uh, it's hard lines. Um, I'm obviously absolutely good at Fulham, but Jesus, credit to Terran Year, what a team. You know, I think they, they were asked questions, serious questions of them there in the second half. And I think that just goes to show the quality that they have. They never panicked, they never never doubted their abilities and they found a way. And that is what a champion team does. They find a way even on even if it's not their best day out there. The man who grew up at Glenstone Abbey, the senior cup, taking on another big moment in his rugby career. Stephen Madigan kick well, but really Aaron Egan takes everything to go and put it through. Yeah, listen, obviously I was following the clock on the screen there and I didn't realise that that was the last kick of the game. What a clutch moment from Aaron Egan to, to slot that straight between the sticks. You know, I think he's, he's probably played second string a little bit to Callum Smith throughout the year and since Callum picked up his injury, he's taken his opportunity with both hands and he looked right at home there in that 10 jersey today. So credit to him, he's, he's run a serious outfit around the park for 80 minutes and uh, he's got his reward. He's got a final look forward to next week. Well, the advertisement for club rugby all to see here at Lakelands. Tarnier looking to go back to back. Not many have done that. The next Sunday should be good. They'll take on Cork Constitution full time at a rather buzzing Lakelands. Tarnier 31, Lansdowne 28.